What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast presents Scare Actor Appreciation Month. We have been on a grind lately interviewing various scare actors from various events, uh, scare zones, mazes. It's been fun. It definitely has been a fun ride. It has. And uh, we got another another brilliant scare actor with us today. Um, the famous scare zone at Not Scary Farm, The Hollows yep. uh, in Camp Snoopy, is one that is very, very um, unique and fun to go through. And just watching these guys work is uh, just truly a, it's 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 a blessing. It was it's been, it's been a pleasure. All yeah, year. it's been a pleasure. We've watching them work, but today we have um, we have Dylan here, and it uh, we just want to get into what it's like to work at um, at the Hollows, man, because we we saw some funny moments there, and we just want to know. Oh, what, well, before we dive deeper, Dylan, you want you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, how's it going, guys? My name is Dylan. Uh, I've been working at Not Scary Farm for three years now, and uh, it kind of goes by levels of like, uh, not levels, but kind of like stages of like where you work there. And usually, it starts out with an audition, and that happens kind of uh, in August time. And so, basically, you audition, and on the spot, they give you a position where you're going to be. And so my first year, I was actually in Red Barn in the maze. Nice. Yeah, it was it was actually really cool. Honestly, I've just been a big fan of Not Scary Farm since I was like five when I've oh, been nice. going. Wow, nice. And so, so I honestly just wanted to work there. So I honestly didn't even care where I ended up. So when I got Red Barn, it was really cool. Even though it was like the least favorite maze at the time, I still yeah. made like a really good maze in my own eyes because I've been wanting to work there forever. And then after that, um, I auditioned again for the next year and I ended up getting Streets which is all the street zones, which is Ghost Town, which is new as Forsaken Lake, and then Carnival, and now the Hollow. And so I got streets, and I ended up getting the Hollow. And I wanted personally Carnival because I love clowns, but I was just ecstatic. I was like, wow, like I'm on streets. I get to walk around and mess with people, scare people just walking around. It sounds fun. And so this was my second year in the Hollow, which is where you guys spotted me. And um, you're not allowed to uh, be a slider, the person with the, the metal hands and the knee pads, unless you've been on streets for at least one year. So this was my first year sliding because this was my second year on streets. Yeah. Um, and we've heard that. Yeah, we've heard that various that, you know, you have to go at least one year on streets and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, in a way, it looks like the you know the people who are doing that one year kind of like, as they're you know doing their job scare acting, they're kind of shadowing to see, in a way to kind of get ideas to what the right right and wrongs are of this event to what to yeah. do and what not to do. Um, I mean that's a lot of what uh, I would say. I mean a lot of the the people who are doing their one year kind of are getting an idea of what they have to do, what they cannot do, and everything. And um, I really think that's that's uh, that's a fair fair rule because a lot of people want to come in just going right into sliding but i feel like you have to kind of earn your spot yeah it's absolutely true because my first year on streets um it was just like completely new to me i've never done anything like it before and so it was really nice to just be able to sit back and watch people slide and kind of learn from the veterans which are, are the people that have been there for more than three years And so it's just kind of like very helpful to be able to watch people do that. And then the next year, it's kind of like, all right, I'm ready. And then there's a whole slider test that we have to take to make sure we don't hit anyone and uh, make sure we actually know how to stop on point. And it's a whole thing with sliding and you have to create your own gear and all that. But it's absolutely worth it. Definitely. Definitely. And it it looks super cool, to be honest. Uh, Dylan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the character you played out there in the hollow this year? Yeah, so um, I'm one of seven, which is um, one of the smallest numbers of characters in the Hollow of soldiers. There were technically soldiers from like the 1700s, but the we get called pirate a lot. We get pa- called like I don't know, like <laughs> it's like so many nicknames these. for these guys. There's yeah, so many nicknames for us, but there's a total of seven of us, and um, I'm one of the tallest ones. There's two of us. One of uh, the other one, 
he had a different mask this year. If you guys probably recognized him, he had like a um, half his face was gone and showing teeth in his mask. Oh really yeah, great. yeah, yeah. But so we're the two tallest ones, and so it was pretty easy to spot spot us. And then the only difference with me is I switched up my mask this year, so it was just more comfortable. And I switched up my hat. It looks a little bit more of a cowboyish hat, but which is why I got called cowboy a lot. But it was very comfortable. So uh, I pretty much just switched up my hat. And basically, the soldiers, they were from like the 1700s. And the hollow is in a hole is basically a big forest. That's the whole point. It's a forest. And so the soldiers are dead, which is why we're called faceless soldiers. That's the actual name of them. Yeah. We're actually dead. And the whole part of the forest is that there's three witches total. There's one is the, the hag, which is the oldest one the mother and then the maiden that's like an order from oldest to youngest yeah and so each witch has like powers of recreating beings and if you notice there was a lot of scarecrows as well there was probably 30 plus scarecrows in the zone yeah, yeah. each each uh, witch had its own like power and they were able to control certain people so i believe if i'm not mistaken the maiden was in charge of the soldiers so technically if the maiden walked up to a soldier and commanded us to do something we had to do it oh that's oh, wow. that's really cool to add to the lore of the story too yeah so if you notice like which is telling us to do something or telling scarecrows to do something it's because they literally control us yeah and then the mother i believe controls the scarecrows and then the hag controls um the tree beasts i think that's what they're called or they're okay. called I... Shadow Witches now, I think. They changed the name this year. Okay. But uh, there's only a few of those. They're the ones with makeup. They don't wear masks. And they kind of just walk around and and uh, walk around with the witches. Yeah. yeah. And then so the soldiers of the whole point is that the maiden was mad at the mother for creating scarecrows. So she created, she raised faceless soldiers up from the dead for her army to fight the scarecrows. Oh, wow. That was literally the whole point. And then, so basically, soldiers are the people that walk around a lot. Scarecrows can kind of post up. If you notice, they'll just post up like on a post or on a fence and look fake. Yeah. And they can do that, but soldiers can't do that. So we literally just patrol the forest. I but, think, so yeah. We, it's, walk, we walk around a lot. It's such an amazing concept for a scare zone now that I'm hearing more of it. Um, I mean, because obviously you walk through the scare zone, you, you're going to see the scarecrows, you're going to see the faceless soldiers, you're going to see like all the witches and, you know, you're going to see everybody and you're just kind of, you know, it's, it's a creepy vibe as it is. And especially with the, uh, the color gradient they use with the lighting and, 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 and the fog, it really, it really adds to more of that lore of, you know, creepy and, and scary for that, for that scare zone. Um, and it's something that we, when we walk through every time, it, it really, it was a really badass scare zone, I, I would say, because I, I enjoyed uh, walking through, watching everyone do their thing. Um, the scarecrows uh, would just stand up on post. So actually, one of them got me, and I did like a matrix type move. Oh, that was really cool, yeah. That was funny, yeah, because I was like, I didn't see him, and I kind of did like a, a neo kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, and then we, and then I, there was a certain spot we would go sit at, and we would just watch you guys slide. Now, um, I would say, you know. CS is a very it's like slider heaven over there. Yeah, it's um where you guys were sitting a lot is what we call slider corner. It's literally just a dark corner where if you're standing in the middle of the street and look into the corner, you just see black. Yeah. Like it's yeah. perfect camouflage. And so it's really lit up for us to see. And so it's it's just a perfect spot to hit slides. Yeah. Um, the the best times to slide in CS would be I think between like 9 to 11 p.m. And then after that, it kind of dies down in that area. Yeah. And then you could still sit there and hit slides, but it's better to walk around. Yeah. But pretty much, yeah, that's like the best spot to hit slides. But personally, I think uh, it is harder to scare in Carnival because of how bright it is. Definitely. You learn, how to, you learn how to scare really well because you're because of how bright it is. Like if you can scare in Carnival, you can scare anywhere. Yeah, because of how it's like it's just a fact. Yeah. But that to me would probably be slider heaven. Even though I've never slid in in Carnival, it's just there's so much open area. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and we actually, 
we had a we had someone from Carnival on the show um, just recently, and he was telling us that's that's that what you brought up is true. Yeah, it's it it is very lit, and you know it's very there's a lot of light there, but um, that is what ultimately makes for um, creative and and good scares because you know you got to really use your surroundings and and the and the people around you to kind of idolize scares and and blend in and and really just kind of try to be creative when it comes to scaring but i like i I, me personally i've always liked the when you don't see it coming scare Mm, definitely and you get a lot of that with um cs forsaken lake and and ghost town where um it's one of those things where if you don't see if you're not looking if you're not paying attention and for example like the dark corners like when you don't expect it but at the same time you do expect it it's like it's one of those things that really kind of gets me like my adrenaline going because like it's it's i think it's perfect for a scare you guys did a lot of fun stuff this season we we so much so we had to make a an amazing compilation of just you guys Definitely. um just having fun out there and one of my favorite things that you guys did this season was um and we caught it on camera too. It's one of my favorite clips. Uh, when you guys, uh, when you guys dropped a, a group of people, and it was hilarious. Definitely. Oh, uh, yeah, the one that I was a part of. Yeah. Yeah, that that was actually one of my favorite scares this season. I was really shocked you caught it on camera. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, I'm not going to give other people's names because I don't know if they want to be on the show. But he was actually one of my close friends, and he was the scarecrow that helped me with the scare. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but he, he, we hit the slot. And me and him are like we like read each other's minds. It's crazy. So we hit the same scare on a slide at the exact same time. But he came up from the back right of them, and I came up from the front left of them. So they literally just got like sandwiched by us. That's hilarious. And that's why like three people in the group just dropped to the floor. And then I pretty much uh, – uh, my favorite line this season was, why are you on my floor? Get off my floor. Because <laughs> people drop on the floor a lot. So I just be like, why are you on my floor? I was like, get off my floor. And so you can kind of hear that in the raw video that you took where I'm just yelling at them, get off my floor. And they're kind yeah. of like swimming on the floor. Yeah, like, no, because so one of them was actually like – one of them crawled out. Yeah. Um, yeah. You then, see at the very end of the video when I filmed it, she like crawled out and they kept going after her, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, my the favorite thing is the chase. I love the chase, especially when, now that I'm a slider. It's yeah. so much fun. So like uh, I love the part in the video where uh you could see her get out of the camera shot and then you just see me walking extremely fast. Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um taking back to an earlier point you had mentioned about the hollow um, that the scarecrows and soldiers kind of don't like each other. Did you guys ever get into like any like quote unquote altercations with one another? All right. So funny story is um, this year we did it kind of like here and there where like uh, one of the um, God, shadow witches, I think they're called this year. Uh, one of the shadow witches, we have a picture. I can't remember who took it, but there's a picture of, a shadow witch breaking a scarecrow's neck and then I'm <laughs> clapping around like a group of people. I'm clapping like, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> and so like he just fell to the ground and died. So I'm happy a scarecrow died. And then I've gotten in altercations with scarecrows where we pretend to fight and then I kill him and then he gets back up and I'm like, oh, they can't die. <laughs> and then, um, pretty much just go on. But the biggest one was last year that I helped choreograph, which ended up being a complete flop, but it was really funny was that we kind of created like a battle royale versus nice. versus the soldiers and the scarecrows. And we got like eight scarecrows and all seven soldiers. And we kind of just like brawled out for like 10 minutes, like in the middle of CS. That, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is really it funny. was really fun. It didn't look real, but it was funny because people were like, oh, my God. Well, it's it's one of those things too, as like as an as the audience, you know, you're you're walking, and all of a sudden, you just see this happen, and you don't exactly. know how you don't know how to react, you don't know what to do, you just you kind of just watch it, and you just like you're it just throws you off guard, which I and I think is uh, sometimes is another good way to get up for a scare too, you yeah. know, because like your attention is elsewhere, and then someone else can come from behind or from the sides or everything. And I think it's but I, it's moments like that, like we there's a lot of those at haunt this year. At least what we saw, and it's just moments like that where it it, it makes it, it makes it more fun, and it makes it like, 
a better surrounding. Like a little shenanigans every now and then is like it's what's needed at at some of those events, you know? Because like having fun, and getting scared, it's it's really fun. But I think with the shenanigans, like I've seen a lot of shenanigans, and it really like it, it's just funny to me. I just yeah. I, I get a blast, you know, freaking watching you guys do stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there's also something I know that you guys would like is that for the soldiers specifically just for us, we have we didn't do it that much this year, which I'm kind of sad about. But I think it was just because our, all the soldier schedules didn't line up that well this year. Um, but we used, we did a march this year, which we did last year. And we pretty much put ourselves in like an arrow formation and just like march through the whole zone and making people nice. get out of our way. Like, we're not going to move, so you better move. <laughs> so... Um, it was really cool because we had a perfect even amount of sliders and non-sliders as uh, soldiers. So we had the main general in the front, and then it was me and the other tall soldier next to us. And then the other soldiers were behind us. And pretty much when we saw an opening, uh, the other tall slider can slide too. And so when, when we saw an opening during the march, we would just slide out of the formation at nice. people. And then get back into the formation, and then we'd flip it at the very beginning of CS and go all the way back to the end of CS. It was actually really cool, and That's only the soldiers so cool. could do that. You did that. You guys did that this year. Yeah, we did it like three times this year, but that was not enough. We just didn't. We we didn't plan it accordingly. Yeah. But we did it a lot last year. That's something I hope I get to. Um, hopefully, it works out better for you guys next year. Be something I would love to get on on film for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we did it every single night last year, but I wasn't a slider then, so that kind of sucked. Yeah. Um, you, now, you you back to favorite scares though. You we obviously talked about the scare that we caught on camera, but do you have another favorite scare maybe? Man, dude, like, uh, I'll just tell you my thought process. So, I I uh, was a person who started early, but I still closed, so I yeah. stayed till the very end. So I literally was there from 7, 8, 7 p.m. when they opened and did the rope drop, which I was a part of every single night, and then I would close at uh, 2 a.m. So I was there that whole time, four days a week, uh, for the entire run. So you can see, like, me being out there for so long, I hit so many good scares, I lose count. So the first uh, weekend... I, I like to set a counter because, like, you'll be shocked. I'm sure you've heard it, heard it already, but people pee their pants, people cry, mm. people fall. And so I, I like to make a mental list where, like, all right, I made this many people cry tonight. I made this many people pee themselves. I made this many people hit the floor. <laughs> and in the first weekend, I lost count. Oh, wow. I bet, yeah, because – On, cause on it... all three of them. Oh, wow, yeah. I bet because there's people that – that just go out there and just can't control any of yeah. that. Which so I think is personally for me though, because of my stature and I do stand and walk really fast when I'm in costume, um, I'm just an intimidating person. I technically don't even need to hit the scare. Yeah. I'm just intimidating if I walk towards someone. And so personally for me, my favorite scare is just standing still and making someone walk around me. And then I just do a jump scare and they just flip and they're just <laughs> gone. And then uh, I love chasing people. So when it comes to someone running away, I just yell out, I love a runner. And then I just start sliding at them. And then <laughs> it's, just, it's just really fun because I love to chase. And Definitely. then my all time favorite scare, which actually ended up on a, I actually found it. Um, I need to find it again so I can save it. But it, it ended up on a TikTok that went viral. Oh, nice. Which oh. Is, yeah, it was weird. I was like the end of this TikTok. And I was amazed someone got it. But basically what happened is I trapped these four chicks inside the store at Camp Snoopy at the very beginning. Yeah. I literally chased them in there and just stood there for like 20 minutes. <laughs> they were not – and that's the only way in and out of the store. So they literally were just trapped there videotaping me. That's and freaking I, I hilarious. I just wouldn't move. And then because people – like other monsters were seeing me do this, they would join in. So I had like three more people, like two more scarecrows. And, like, we just stood there, and then an I, like, I like to point at people. So, like, I, I just straight up just pointed at one of the chicks, and then I just did, like, the thumb to my neck and, like, said I'm going to kill her, basically, with hand motions. And so <laughs> she just flipped. She flipped shit and basically just, like, wouldn't come out. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. It's because, like, what, what I find funny about these events, too, it's, like, 
You know, you go to these events and you, you see people like that and they, they feel, I, I don't know what goes in their thought process, if they think it's a real thing or not, if they think they're really going to get hurt and, and I, don't, I don't know what their, their their thought process is, but I just love it when, when moments like that happen. We saw a, a couple of those this year um, in, in Ghost Town and it, we just like looked at each other like, really? like Yeah. It's it, it, but it's funny to us because like it, it's one of those moments where you're just kind of like, yeah, these guys, they got like scared of the night right there easily. Um, mm -hmm. We we loved watching you guys a lot, uh, and we came into the hollows about mid season because um, we just we wanted to explore more and get out of Ghost Town because there we knew there was more more talent out there and I'm so glad we did that and now we know for next year to just keep making rounds for the night and um, you know we we, 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 we see this we, we went into the hollows and I, I remember how it started for me is uh, I actually went on a night where um, it was uh, just me by myself on a Thursday and you know I was like you know I'm gonna go check out all the other stuff cuz you know I'm getting a little I just want to move around yeah. you know and uh, so I went to go sit in the hollows, and that's when I sat in that spot because I saw you guys sliding. Um, and I just immediately – I knew this was, like, going to be my – one of my top favorite scare zones because the fact of the matter is you guys had a kind of a rotation. You guys – I loved how you guys always cheered each other on, which is really freaking cool uh, as far as teamwork goes because it, it's acknowledging each other of how good uh, each one of you got a scare. Um and I, I just loved all out the like like I said the theming of it was awesome and I loved at midnight when they would do like the the uh, trying to kill the, the witch the show which yeah, is freaking the awesome show. yeah um so going to that show uh, how's that like you know uh, preparing for that every night because um, it gets a really good audience reaction and there's a lot of people that stand around to watch it um, are you part of the show too so there's believe a total of four or five shows one's the big one um i'm not sure if you were part or saw the little ones but there's a cage at the very back of cs yeah and yeah. uh basically um i think there's four shows total so i'm part of the 1045 one there's a show every 45 minutes okay on the hour so there's one at 8:45, or i think it starts at 9 45 so there's one at 9 45 and basically each show the witch hunters catch a witch and put her in the cage oh and so the first one they catch the first witch which is the maiden i believe and then the second show they uh that's what the one i was part of and the witch hunters basically grabbed me and made me pull the hag into the cage and i threw her in the cage every night and so uh, that was the hag. And then the last one is 1145. And that's when they catch the mother and throw her in the cage. And then they basically make a huge announcement saying 15 more minutes and we're going to go burn the witches. And that's the midnight show. Yeah, because I like how it's a story that leads up to that event. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's cool that like they, they plan all this. They, they have a story that they want to tell throughout the night and entertain guests. And if guests can stay around – um, the hollows all night to kind of get to that story or if they get lucky and every time they go through something and they come back through the hollows like they get to catch another one of the shows it's just interesting to me that it leads up to one big thing and um, it's something that it's it's very unique because you don't see that at a lot of events um, looking at events like Halloween Horror Nights or like you know uh, the Queen Mary or stuff like that you don't see a lot of little individual shows that will tie into the lore of said scare zone or maze um and i feel like knots pushes the the bar to that every year especially with this year um not only do they do that with the hollows but this year big time they did that with ghost town with of course the whole sarah marshall lore um and i really like when when you kind of establish a universe I say? yeah um because it, if we, once you tie everything in it really makes it more of a kind of unique experience to like okay, now you want to go explore different things and now you want to go see different stories as to how it all ties in, which I think is really cool. And um, Sarah Marshall being, of course, a, a witch, it, it kind of, the way I kind of looked at the Hollows, I mean, you know, it's been going on for years before they even started the Sarah Marshall lore. But for this year, the way I looked at it is it was kind of like a an early 
adaptation of how like which trials and stuff began yeah. at like you know the the calico area but it, it's really it's really cool to just see everyone and every you know everything surrounding the the scare zone in general because it, it's it, it really it, it's a scare zone that honestly stands out you know what i mean and um i think a lot of it to do is with the, of course the unique uh the unique monsters who who bring it to life every single night and which is you guys of course you have different monsters that come out and you know play this role um some of them speak some of them don't i mean it, it, i think it's really unique and you guys really bring that to life every single night um cuz i remember every night we would go you guys would bring that story to life and um it really engages the audience to want to participate more into the story of the hollows and learn more about this uh, scare zone which i really enjoyed um yeah I have I, some more backstory on the big show actually is the what a lot of people don't understand when they watch it is that the whole basis is actually the witch hunters coming out and they're basically bragging that they caught the witches and they're about to burn them and the witches are saying no you can't you can't beat us we're unbeatable and so what a lot of people don't understand is that when he's holding the torch and what he's burning is what uh each witch's totem yeah so each witch has a own totem and that's one of the things they capture during the little shows yeah and so that's what he's burning and that's why the witches are like screaming like oh, i'm dying yeah but really really it's like a backfire and they just get more powerful when they cast a spell which is the big long i don't remember what it is but uh with that big long spiel of the spell that they do and pretty much turn all the monsters against them and that's why they run into the cave and get eaten yeah, and, and so I, it, just win at the end. It's such a it's such a freaking cool moment too, because all the monsters go and you just hear screams, and then they all come yep. out with body parts. Yeah, I I was a part of the big show, uh, I believe four times because one of the our general, the one who does the talking part during the show, yeah, uh, he he uh, was injured a couple oh. nights, and so I had to fill in for him. But it was it was the first time I've ever done it, and it was really fun. Yeah, how was your? Uh... So you said that, yeah, you, and you said that was like the first time you were you ever done it. How how is it preparing for something like that every night? Is it like something that you guys kind of like before it happens? You guys you know pump each other up to kind of get in the zone. How how do you guys prepare for that every night? Yeah, so for the ten forty five one, I do every, I did every night. I basically just kind of just winged it the first like couple nights because they yeah. just said, look, we just need you to drag her into the cage and stand there and then leave. And I was like, all right, I can do that. And so the first night was kind of a bust. We didn't, I didn't drag her in the cage uh, at the correct time because there was like a certain line that he would say, but I can't hear it. And so I would drag her in late or early sometimes. So we got that down like to a pat. Like we came up with a system. We talked to each other and came up with a system of when we can time it correctly. And it was flawless the rest of the season after we did that. Yeah. But when it came to me doing the big show, I had to memorize the lines. So oh. obviously it's not me talking. Yeah. It's just to speak the voiceover. And so basically I had to memorize the line so I can do the hand motions yeah. to make it look like I was talking. And that was just kind of stressful because they told me that day, like two hours before <sighs> oh, wow. that I was going to do it. It's only like three lines, but still like a lot of people. And I was like, Oh my God, I didn't know I was going to do this today. Uh, Cause he hurt himself that night. And so I was like, all right, um, so basically there's like a, um, uh, a sound set thing that they had, a, they had a recording. And so they basically sent it to me on email and I had to just listen to it and I just kind of memorized it. And so that was pretty much it. And then afterwards they just kind of popped me up and they're like, yeah, you did great. And then, nice. uh, we'll probably have to have you do it again tomorrow. And I was like, sounds good. It was really fun. And so it's kind of just stuck like that. It's really fun. I think it's cool that they give you, uh, they get, they kind of give you that opportunity to like step up and and really show, and you. And it sounds like you nailed it. But, um, I don't know if I may have caught it or not. I don't know. I saw that show a couple times, um, but no, yeah, it's really cool that like they let you step up and kind of, you know, you prove to them like, yeah, I can do this. This is fun. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really cool. Um, would you Would you mind telling us how your characters evolved throughout the season? But evolve how? Like, like, did you like do some certain techniques at the beginning of the season that maybe you weren't doing, or some things you were doing at the end of the season that you weren't doing at the beginning, or 
Oh, wow. well, definitely I talked more at the end. I got more comfortable because um, what a lot of people don't understand is that we don't do this all year. Yeah. Like, yeah. so like the first weekend, we're all rusty. Like, I don't care who the monster is. I don't care who this character is. We're all rusty. Like, it's it's either you, you're not going to be 100% the first week um, on every aspect. Like, you're not going to be a really good slider, but then also be really good at knowing what your character is supposed to do and say and a bunch of other stuff. So in the beginning, I was just working on my character, like, walk and... Uh, it was the first time sliding. It was literally my first time ever sliding on not scary farm ground. So wow. I had to get used to that with people walking. Like, yes, walking so I didn't hit them, yeah. which I did get close a couple times, and that kind of scared me. So I would stop sliding for a while, and then I would jump back into it and be like, okay, I'm comfortable. So honestly, I just kind of started out more skittish in the beginning, if that makes any sense, where I just didn't talk much. I slid around sometimes. Because I was just trying to get like the training wheels off. Definitely. And Definitely. then the, probably the last, like, I would say two weeks, three weeks in, I was like nailing it. That's when I was like, okay, I know what my character does. I know he can talk, just not like a lot. Yeah. And I know that I, I'm a, actually a decent slider. So I just kind of just went in with it. And then by the last weekend, second to last weekend, I personally believe I was like, one of the best sliders in the zone out of like <laughs> 30 people. Yeah, so. definitely. Definitely. Cause, uh, yeah. And you, and you mentioned, of course, you know, getting back into it. And I think what a lot of it has to do is like your, your main focus is just like, okay, I don't want to hurt anyone. Um, just because that's a big, you know, that's a big thing yeah. for, for you guys. Sure. And, and that, I think that's, that was, that was what was kind of your main focus was just like, let me get back into the groove of things. Let me make sure it's all safety and stuff. And then when I get back into the groove of things, then boom, we'll just, you know, I'll get better at it. And, and week after week, you know, I'll start doing little by little. That way I'm warming myself up and then boom, you're back into the groove and you got it. Um, Do you, now do you, now you mentioned that you, you are a little rusty, but do you, do you ever do, uh, do you ever go to like any of the parks that uh, a lot of the other sliders do and just go and practice with them? Or you just, do you wait till haunt season? Well, since this was my first year sliding, I didn't have any of the gear. So I had to, uh, create it all myself, which I learned that you have to do. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, one of my homies, uh, his first year sliding, we, we've done exactly the same thing. We were in Red Barn our first year and then he went to Carnival and then I went to see us. But, uh. Uh, so he was basically showing me the ropes because he got um, more involved with it earlier than me because yeah. uh, he was closer to the park that they would practice skating at. And then also uh, I just was too busy at the moment with work. And then so when I finally got available, I was literally first time I've ever slid was two and a half months or so before knots started. Oof. Okay. That was the first time I ever hit the ground with knee pads. And so – uh, I did go to that park for about two and a half months, and that was like, I would say, maybe a total of 10 times I was at the park, and okay. that's when I was actually practicing, and I actually took my GoPro and took a bunch of videos and created a YouTube video about it on my YouTube channel. I think I actually watched that video, because uh, I remember when we uh, when you started following us and we got you on the show... I saw that you had a channel, so then I went to go check it out, and I actually remember you. Cause didn't you also make a video about breaking down your gear and stuff too? Uh, yeah, I didn't uh, go into creating it, but I it was in the same video in the very beginning. I yeah. broke down exactly what you need to be a slider, yeah. and then I put it on for them for everyone to see what it looks like with no costume. It's just me yeah. with shorts on, and then the rest of the video is just highlights from the practices that all the sliders would go to, and the practice which blew me away is that there were people every from everywhere. It wasn't just not scary farm. There were people from universal. There were people from dark Harbor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mainly dark Harbor and knots, but we all had like our own little section and we got along and it was like trippy and we would just bring big speakers and just blast them till like 1.00 AM. And then we'd all get, go get food and uh, stay out till like 4.00 AM. Like it's a, it's like a whole like event basically. We're all like the homies that never talk to each other for like all year just get to like hang out before knots and i think that's what's fun because um one of our favorite groups on the channel decayed brigade practices there a lot um a lot of members do actually and um 
and I think it's it's cool that they invite people out to come and just you know even if they don't want to do it right away they invite them out just to come watch and then they have they have days where they invite them out and people let them join in and stuff and I think it's really cool that everyone there is there for the same purpose so they know that and they all get along and they all just want to help each other get better and improve in, in this because I look at sliding as and I've, and I've talked to other characters about it I kind of look at it as a sport in a way yeah. because you have to be really kind of in a way good with your cardio and good with getting up so you have to be kind of good with just your body in general just to kind of really do this because this is a this is an intense sport if you really look at it yeah I'm not even gonna lie it was a um, there's a lot of people who supported me on helping me like even get decent at sliding yeah because I'm not gonna lie saying that I was like not afraid and like saying like oh yeah I'm, I'm ready I'm already gonna be a best slider it was like honestly I was like nervous as hell yeah because first time ever sliding at knots and then plus it's like I'm a six three over two hundred pound dude and I can't imagine and I already have like semi bad knees so yeah. it, it was like already in my head like man this is gonna hurt I can't imagine doing this for over a month and a half straight. Like, I don't know if I can do this. It was just a lot of mind games. And then the first, like, two weekends of uh, hanging out with them, and they were all being very supportive of, of like, don't be afraid. Like, the knee pads are meant to, like, help you. And uh, basically saying that, um, like, teaching me different techniques to hit the ground and get up so I can get up fast without hurting myself. And honestly, it helped. Like, um, the only parts that actually – even today still kind of affect me but i think it's just because i'm tall is that my left lower back because okay. i would always prop myself up on my right leg yeah to pop up so my left lower back uses a lot of muscles to push myself up but yeah. honestly it was a lot better than i thought it was gonna be for how big i am i uh i feel you i'm six six so i can imagine if yeah. i were to start doing it it'd be like probably the same same exact thing um yep. And on top of that, I, I I had I had freaking ankle surgery about two years ago because I broke it, and I haven't been Jeez. the same since. But uh, I yeah, don't know, the, man. The biggest thing we hear all the time is like, "Yeah, I bet your knees hurt." And I'm like, "No, they don't." Yeah, yeah no, because I and that's been I, I I would see slides at the event this year where um like they would slam on the floor, and I'm just like, that looks like it it hurts. But well, honestly, the knee pads are really good. Like you don't feel it in your knees. If anything, I feel it in my back and my hands. Yeah. Because I would use um, – I didn't do it till like, more than half the season was or over, which really sucks because it, it did help me at the end. Yeah. But uh, put extra padding in your gloves because I didn't do that. And so the metal pieces on your hand, when you would smack it on the ground to make the loud noise or just to hit the ground, um, the metal pieces would, like, not stab you, but just, like, they're strong, like they're – they're yeah. very thick and heavy, so it would hit your hand and like literally got bruises. Like yeah. that was like the hardest part for me. Uh, to, to change topics, um, just a little bit. Um, what was like your routine to get into character every night? So for me, I drank a monster every nice. single day. Nice. Uh, like um, uh, back in the day, like I'll sum it up really quick, but I. I I was, like, a really big dude, so I lost a lot of weight doing uh, the Atkins diet or whatever it's called. But pretty much just protein only. I didn't have any carbs or sugar. Yeah. And so I was already addicted to Monster at that point. So I switched over when I was on that diet to the – I think it's called Sunrise. It's the orange can. Okay. And so that one has, like, less sodium and no sugar, no carbs, whatever. And so I was literally, like, addicted to those. I'd have one or two of those a day. Wow. During knots yeah. because I was doing my normal job and a full-time student and then plus YouTube and all this other stuff I was involved in. Yeah. So I kind of just needed that boost. So I would drink one like probably like on the drive there, which is like an hour and a half drive for me. And then um, probably one where I, when I get there because I have to wait like two hours until the, the ropes drop. Yeah. And then the biggest part is honestly getting your gear on right before like earlier so that way you kind of already feel like you're ready to go out because there's a lot of people that would get their gear on like right before they go out or uh, show up a little late and get their gear on kind of late but i would always put it on maybe like an hour before uh like uh in the video i made i go over the gear and so pretty much i put my shoes on early and then i put my spats on which are the ankle 
uh, barriers. Yeah. And then uh, pretty much after that, I would go to our uh, zone and I would put the rest of it on. And honestly, I would just stretch, pump myself up because I knew people were coming in. And even though I was really like dead tired or hungry or sleepy or anything, really, I just knew it was going to be fun because this is what I love to do. Yeah. So that's I would just I would just mentally boost myself up by talking to myself in my head saying like this is like what you wanted there's no no reason to like whine about stuff that doesn't matter right now like like if i have homework to do at home i have homework to do at home i can't do anything about it now yeah i might as well just i'm stuck here and i might as well make the best of it so i'd always tell myself like people are coming in to be scared they bought tickets for me to scare them how yeah. cool is that yeah and that's so freaking awesome i would just pump myself up yeah um, was there ever times where you, uh, would like listen to music or anything to also pump you up or was it just, just kind of like the motivational talk to yourself every night? I think it's just the motivational talk. The first year I did streets, I, I brought headphones and I would listen to music kind of like solitude myself, but that was also my first year on streets. And I did not to say I didn't have any friends. Um, cause I did, it was just more, I didn't know everyone in the zone. And this Definitely. year I came in and I was, I was a veteran. And yeah. so it was kind of just like I knew a bunch of people. So I didn't really like keep to myself this year as much as I did last year yeah. behind the scenes. So I talked to more people. So there was kind of no point for headphones. But I did listen to music on the drive. And it, like I have a set playlist that would pump me up. That would be like heavy metal. Nice. And, and just like just rocking out during the drive. Because even though, it was, even though it was bumper to bumper, it would pump me up just until I get there. And yeah. If if you don't mind me asking, what are your, some of your bands that uh, really pump oh, you up? Oh, God. The list goes forever. I'm a big concert fanatic. I've oh. seen over, like, 100 people live. Me me too, brother. Me um, too. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I don't know. Like, all the oldies are just obvious, like Metallica. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, some of my top favorite ones would be, like, Rise Against. Lincoln Park's, like, my number one favorite. Um, Disturbed. Oof, man. Uh, Paramore, even though it's not heavy metal, I just love that. Oh, Paramore's good, though, man. Yeah. Um, In This Moment, Suicide Silence. This is a list. The li yeah, the list does go on. There's Slip, so many. Slipknot. Slipknot's man. good. Uh, dude, there's so many. There I'm is, just, yeah. like, trying to think of them. But, yeah, like, I would literally just listen to all these stuff and then, like, pump me up. That, that's yeah. why when I was coming up with the uh, music for your compilation, I was like, I need to give these guys something that's, like, it's fast, it's aggressive, and it would fit the fit the scare zone. And I felt Domination by Pantera just did that. For yeah. Me. There's actually a song that I want to use that's stuck in my head, like the name of it, so I'll never forget it, is that when I end up not doing knots or I just take a break one year and I'm basically going to come in and do what you guys do and just yeah. take videos, I have a perfect song where I want to make a compilation. It's uh, You guys can use it if you want. I really don't care. But it's uh, it's... Uh, from the band in this moment, and it's called, um, uh, the, it's literally called The Hollow, I think. Oh, nice. Nice. Or, yeah. No, no, I think it's called Roots. It's called Roots. Uh, and, I'm going to I'm yeah, gonna leave that one to you because I know that that's something that you want to do, and I would yeah. really love but, to see it. But, like, but like literally, it's like the song within the chorus that says, Into the Hollow. And nice. And it's just like, oh, it's so perfect. And yeah. it's heavy metal, fast-paced. And so, like, that song is kind of stuck in my head when I'm actually scaring because I think about it. It's nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, when did you know you wanted to become a, a monster at knots? Oh man, dude. Since I was like, since I can think. Like, <laughs> first time I was ever there was um, when I was like about four or five years old. Um, my parents' first date was actually at Not Scary Farm. Oh wow! Nice. Like back, way back when. So it's kind of like it's always been in my blood that I wanted to. Halloween has been my favorite time of the year ever. And then uh, more backstory about me is that when I was about, I would say, 10, maybe nine years old, my parents started uh, doing Halloween like mazes, like little ones in our front yard. Nice. And I was a, I've been a Boy Scout my whole life. Obviously, I've, I've aged out now. I'm an Eagle Scout. Yeah. But, um, it was actually a really good platform because we got a lot of help within the Boy Scouts. We made it like a, like a trust, not trust building, but like a very, like a good weekend 
activity for the scouts. Yeah. Where um, I would think the second to last weekend or the, like two weekends before Halloween, they would show up at my house and we'd get two by fours and literally create a maze nice. from my front yard to my backyard zigzagging. And so it would literally end up being like 200, like 200 yards or 200 feet long maze. That's awesome. And yeah. so I did that for about seven years Oof. Uh, with nice. my parents. And so there's little, like we even have a documentary about my family. We made it in the, the nice. daily breeze. Like, like literally like we, made mazes for this and so my parents were super ecstatic when i became a monster just like my first year at red barn they were just like you were literally like trained for this and i'm like you're right (laughs) that's freaking awesome it's it's that's like the biggest backstory for me personally i know there's been other monsters that i've talked to that have done mazes and stuff as well and they just wanted to do something big like not scary farm yeah like i can honestly see myself working there like as like a manager one day because that's how much I like it. And I want to be able to create, like they create, they start creating the mazes and zones a good like year and a half before. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, so, like, they're already working on them right now. Actually, they're probably yeah, working on them during haunt. They were already halfway done with the year 2020 when this year started. Yeah. yeah. Like it's crazy. And so like that for me, like it's amazing that I was able to basically train myself <laughs> with my parents before I got hired in us. That's a freaking dope story, man. Because, yeah, a lot of people start off in home haunts, and that's when they know they want to do it and mm-hmm. and get further involved with, of course, the uh, the haunt industry because um, that's how a lot of people start out is, like, you know, you, you're not 18 yet, and um, you're, you're going to – you know, you want to you wanna scare people, but, you know, you can't work at the events like Knott's or Universal because of the fact of, you know, you're going to, you know, you're not old enough to do it yet. So you start at a home haunt, get that experience that you can, and then you take it to the home, you take it to the, to like, Knott's and everything. And, you know, when you come in, you have your own tactics already, but at the same time, you can even learn from people, which I think is a really cool yeah, thing, Yeah, I've learned so much. Yeah. Like, um, I thought I knew it all until I worked there. Yeah, there's yeah we've had just so much fun moments with everybody there, and I I, I really appreciate all the characters day in day out who come in every night and just put on one of the greatest fucking shows in the world. Um, it's seriously, it's a hard job to do. To, uh, like you just said, you you were working a job, you were going to school full time, and then you came to knots. It's like. Like, a lot of people wouldn't even be able to last one week with that schedule, and you made it work, and you, you worked around everything. And for that, we applaud you, and we appreciate you because um, you put uh, you you were part of a team that helped put on one of the greatest fucking shows in the world. And we say it on pretty much every podcast we've done so far. Um, Knott's was our favorite event due to moments like... Um, what you guys put on in the hollows, what everybody else does in the other scare zones and mazes. We just appreciate everyone who day in, day out just would go and, and, and put on this show. So, yeah. Thank you. It honestly means a lot to me because not, not a lot of people understand what most of the scare actors uh, go through in their everyday life, and then they come to knots. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's very – time consuming and mentally draining and it's it's just you just have to think that it's worth it at the end which it is it's where it's basically a family like i found out real quick that cs is just a family yeah like cs for life it's just crazy definitely so like we literally made friendships that will last like so many years and then families that you will never forget so it's a huge huge experience and just something i'll never forget man definitely all right one of our one of our final questions here um is what was uh what would be some of your advice for someone that maybe want to become a a notch monster one day honestly develop your own character it's it's still hard for me to think about it because like i said clowns are my favorite but it's hard to get into carnival because there's nothing creative anymore it's all been done like like, if you can think of something that, that hasn't been done, it's amazing. Like, for instance, my best friend uh, at Haunt, 
was the firefighter clown. I don't know if you saw him. I've seen him. I saw him a lot, he actually. The, he was the only firefighter in the zone. But yeah. a lot of people don't realize that there was a firefighter before him, but just years and years ago. Yeah. So people yeah. thought he was he was original, which I'm sure, like, in his own head he was, or maybe he did know about the previous one. Yeah. But I think mainly he was just thinking that there's not one in the zone now, so why wouldn't they accept it? Exactly. But the point is, is, like, he created the character his own way. Mm -hmm. The firefighter before him didn't look anything like him, didn't act anything like him. He was his own firefighter. Yeah. Even though the character has been done before, he did it. For me, it's really hard because you can't really come up with a new character in CS. Clowns are very easy. Like, you can come up with that. Ghost Town's even easy because there's so many characters you can do. Like, there's a bat in Ghost Town. Like, there's, uh, there's, yeah. a, there's an orphan because there was a teacher... So someone was like, why can't we be an orphan? Or like, there's even like students, like it's trippy. Yeah. But CS, it's like there's scarecrows, they're set because we have set roles. There's, yeah. there's scarecrows, there's soldiers. But honestly, just create your own character. Like think about what you like, give it a name, give it a walk, give it a certain type of scare, like your signature scare. Like if you, you can watch a scare actor for an entire weekend and you will learn which like which scare is their signature scare and which one they do the most definitely it's because that's what they practice that's what they chose that character to be that scare is because that's how they are so yeah. just yeah. develop your own character and then during auditions come if you actually were going to become someone at knots during the audition, you have to be extremely prepared. You have to, if you want to develop your own character, that is not just an open audition, but like a character, you would have to come in with like headshots, like the, the costume, because you have to create your own costume if you're going to create your own character. You have to just come in with all the paperwork saying like, look, this is what it's going to be. This is where I want it to be. This is what I want it to be like. Like you have to be exact with it. You have to be extremely prepared for auditions. So if you're trying to do that, then... That's my best advice is you have to come up with your own character and be really prepared with it. Definitely. And we've heard a lot of great advice from all the characters this season. And just if, if we can make a compilation video of just all the advice, man, like everyone says something different. And yeah. it's like everyone has their own methods and everyone has their own ways of getting in. And it's all super great advice because – I think that's what a, a lot of reason why a lot of people are watching these is because not only do they want to know the scare actor who is freaking scaring the crap out of them and, you know, some amazing funny stories that they've provided, but they also want to know what it's like to get into the industry of, um, of, of you know, scaring people because a lot of people are probably coming of the age of, like, they want to do it and they really just want to know how, how they go about, you know, preparing for something like this and it's because of characters like you that give such amazing advice to people who are very interested in becoming um monsters that uh we we love we love interviewing you guys because we like we like hearing what you guys have to say and we love we love just you know idolizing you guys you guys are our heroes man and it's like you know a lot of people look at you know freaking you know batman and superman as heroes it's like we celebrate Halloween year round at the on this channel, and for you guys to take the time, the seven to six weeks out of your out of your um, season to put on a show like this one and scare the living crap out of us and bring your nightmares to life, you guys are our fucking heroes. Cause like like we said, this is a hard job to do, and you know sometimes the crowds are not going to be the easiest to work with, and you know sometimes you'll have very cool people that will just cheer you on like us and. We uh we just appreciate you guys so much, and that is why we are doing Character Appreciation Month because we des we think you guys deserve more recognition than you guys um currently have right now. Yeah, and then some last notes um on this subject is to actually I just want to say if you wanted to become this is this is a very active and physical job. Stay fit and drink water. Definitely, like, like this is a very active job. Believe it or not. If people don't sit in the zone like you guys, they probably wouldn't really understand yeah. how much we actually walk around. So stay fit and drink water. It Definitely. really makes a difference. Well, well, well. before we go, we, we can't thank you enough. I mean, we can thank you for hours on end. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to plug? Obviously, we know you got a YouTube channel, so you want to shout that out and anything else? Yeah, before I do that, I would actually like to do my own closing remark. Oh, um, sweet. The, that I think would uh, end this pretty well is – 
Um, I'm not going to lie. I won't cry now because it, it happened like way earlier, but it literally made me like tear up is the last day um, that I was there. I wasn't, yeah, the last day was the second. So I was on the, I was there the last day and we have OG not scary farm fans that would show up and sit in the zone just like you guys, but they would just do it just to watch us, not to video camera and, and like admire us like that. But they literally just came just be like, and they came every day. And I'm sure they walked to other zones, but we have OG fans that would just show up. And I genuinely know a couple of them. And there's this little girl. Um, she's, I believe, 12 years old. And she came every day with her mom. And she literally, like, we would, um, we would like, uh, pull people aside and take pictures um, during the last couple weeks. Because there's certain areas where you're allowed to do that. Yeah. And then there's also yeah. the mid, uh, at the main gate where you're allowed to take pictures and pretty much uh she kind of just talked to me when i was in character so i was was, i'm allowed to talk to her back but only in character and so she came up to me and literally started crying and said i just want to thank you for doing everything that you're doing you literally make my entire year go round, and it literally made me tear up because i was like wow like i can have this much effect on someone and i'm sure this is other people like this and that, and I was, I was literally debating whether or not I was going to come back next year because of how uh, stressful this job is during everything else I have going on. And then I'm almost done with school, so I'll be starting my next career. So I don't know if I'll even have time. But yeah. literally, that conversation with that little girl made me was like, "Wow, I'm going to do this next year." Yeah, like, I had that much effect on someone who cared that much about Halloween. Definitely. And no, yeah, no. It was insane. That's that's so cool that she would go up to you and even say that because a lot of people her age are just even terrified to even walk into the park at that point, you know? But yet alone her coming every night to support you guys and cheer you guys on and then eventually building up that courage to go up and talk to you is is, is so cool. Um, and like I said... Yeah, it, was, it was mind-blowing. I never thought that would ever happen. It was, yeah, it was but, actually insane. And that's why we reached out to the characters that we reached out to because i mean there's so many we would love to talk to but the ones who actually gave us the time of day to respond and the amount of um, feedback we've been getting from other characters doing this is just amazing that i don't think prior to us doing this there wasn't anything like this on the internet um at least not to my knowledge i mean you get to see a podcast every now and then with like one character but i don't think there was an entire month dedicated to just appreciating scare actors because uh i'm glad that we kind of hopefully set the the bar for uh people to do it more and uh really just go out there and because there's other people that can get other people that we can't get and i'd love to hear their stories so i i'm hoping that this this will start kind of like a revolution to persuade to do this more you know what i mean i hope other people can go out there and do this because i would love to hear so many characters stories um and i'm glad and fortunate that we had everyone come on this season um that actually said yes so i i was just yeah, shocked when we, when we got different people from different scare zones mazes it, it was just a blessing that everyone was actually excited to do this and they wanted to share their story so we we thank you for being one of those people yeah, no, thank thank you for inviting me. Like, I never thought I would ever be um, after Haunt. Like, usually after Haunt, you're just done. Like, Haunt's over till next year. And so I thought it was really cool that I get to talk about it to people who really want to, like, hear what we have to say. Yeah. And I was, I just felt honored that you guys reached out to me. And I was like, yeah, man, that sounds fun. Definitely. So thank you guys. No, definitely. And we already, we went on social media today and we confirmed this is going to be our new yearly thing after Haunt. We're gonna That's do this awesome. every every year out in November. We're gonna just celebrate the the um, amazing seasons a lot of these scare actors put on. Whether we get the same ones to come back and share more stories, or we get brand new ones, um, we're open to anything and everything because we just want to hear stories and we just want to have laughs and we just want to beat that post haunt depression because I know it happens to a lot of people and this is kind of our way uh, of beating that. And this is actually our love, our kind of love letter to the haunt industry as to um a big thank you uh because like i like me and sammy keep saying we can't say it enough and we're hoping that people are watching these and just 
realizing how much we appreciate all the work that goes into these haunts, whether it's what you see out in the streets and the mazes or behind the scenes, the people that you don't see. Um, when it comes together, it puts on some of the greatest material and work haunting, whatever you want to call it, it puts on a great fucking show. So, yeah, we, we are just so thankful. So uh, before we sign off, like Sammy said, would you like to plug anything in for your channels, uh, social media? I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, I do. Uh, I post on Instagram not as much because it's not my biggest platform, but I do have Facebook and my biggest one is YouTube and Twitter. Okay. Awesome. What's that, what's that YouTube uh, channel called? It's uh, Psycho Wolverine and it's spelled P S Y Q O. So it's a Q instead of a C H for the Psycho. And then Wolverine, just like the the superhero. So I know nice. he's, he's just my favorite. So that's why. Wolverine. Hey, I don't blame you. Wolverine's a badass. Yeah, I know like everything about him, so I might as well. That should be your uh, that should be your haunt nickname right there, Wolverine. Man, I hope, I wish, bro. That'd be cool. Bro, but was... yeah, so it's uh, it's the same on YouTube and Twitter, Psycho Wolverine. Definitely go check out uh, go check out Psycho Wolverine, man, because this guy is on a grind. Um, well, Dylan, it's been amazing, and we're so glad you came on. Uh, thank you so much for um. Like I said, taking the time out of your day to do this, and we really appreciate everything you've done this season. Thanks, man. I, I, with Without fans like you guys, it wouldn't be worth anything. So thank you guys. Definitely. Awesome. We will definitely be back next year to hopefully see you back in the hollows again, having a fun freaking time, getting the footage, even on nights we don't feel like filming, just sitting there and relaxing, on our drinking our uh, sodas, having our churros. Yeah. Um, it, it's fun. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Uh, and listening to another episode of Scaractor Appreciation Month. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Knights of Horror and on Instagram at The Knights of Horror to keep up of what we're doing throughout the season, even on the off season, or what we're doing this month. And of course, uh, if you're feeling extra generous, uh, make sure to maybe uh, check out our Patreon where you can, uh, of course, check out our different tiers from a dollar to twenty dollars. But always for us. The biggest thing is um, we just appreciate it when you guys subscribe, leave comments, and leave the likes and everything because that really shows us that we're not doing this for nothing. We actually have an audience out there, and we actually have people who are fans, so we want to keep the fans. Um, we want to keep the fans, giving them the content they want to see, and we're glad that people want to watch it. So thank you, everyone, who's been supporting Scarecrow Appreciation Month, who's been with the Knights of Horse since day one, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.